This video will demonstrate some of the techniques used in the removal of intramedullary spinal cord tumors. The first case is a 44-year-old woman with an intramedullary hemangioblastoma. T1-weighted contrast-enhanced sagittal and axial MR demonstrate an intensely enhancing lesion at the T3-4 spinal level. The position of the patient is prone on a Jackson table. I prefer a Mayfield head clamp and tuck the arms at the sides for lesions above T6. A frame-based table such as the Wilson frame is particularly helpful for lumbar lesions to reduce lumbar lordosis during the resection. A standard midline skin incision, subperiosteal muscle dissection, and bilateral laminectomy at the level of tumor is performed. The dura is opened and tented laterally with silk sutures. Under the operating microscope, the tumor can be seen on the dorsal cord surface just off the midline. Hemangioblastomas have a characteristic sunset orange appearance as demonstrated in this case. The thin layer of arachnoid is mobilized off the tumor and surrounding spinal cord to allow the dissection to commence directly on the tumor surface. The T4 dorsal rootlets and superficial veins are mobilized, cauterized, and divided to allow better visualization of the tumor capsule and the tumor spinal cord interface. The tumor spinal cord interface can now be clearly seen as the glistening white spinal pia abruptly intersects with the sunset orange pia of the tumor capsule. Circumferential detachment of the normal spinal pia from the tumor capsule pia is now performed. This is the key to the safe removal of hemangioblastomas of the spinal cord. Unlike intracranial pia, the spinal pia is a robust membrane that requires sharp dissection with either a micro knife or scissors.
For tumors with large intramedullary components, such as this one, vertical myelotomies are performed at the rostral and caudal poles of the tumor to gain access to the intramedullary tumor extensions. The tumor spinal cord margin is now developed with gentle traction and counter traction. The extreme vascularity and friable nature of these tumors generally preclude internal decompression, but much of the tumor's vascularity is reduced during the peel detachment, and gentle cautery on the tumor surface can also effectively shrink the tumor mass. Here, a small suture is used to provide gentle traction on the tumor. Fibrous adhesions and feeding vessels are systematically isolated, cauterized, and divided.
The dura is closed with a running lock 4O silk suture. The remainder of the wound is closed in layers. The next case is a 38-year-old man with an ependymoma. T1 weighted contrast enhanced MRI show an intermedullary mass at the T2, T3 level with large polar cysts both rostral and caudal to the tumor. Patient positioning and exposure is similar to that described for hemangioblastoma. Since both astrocytomas and ependymomas are completely intramedullary, a midline myelotomy through the posterior median septum must be performed to gain access to the tumor. The posterior median septum is identified midway between both dorsal root entry zones. Irrigating cautery on a low setting is used to score and devascularize the posterior median septum. A micro knife is used to open the pia over the posterior median septum. The posterior median septum is carefully opened with a micro forceps and micro dissector. The dorsal aspect of the tumor is identified and the dissection is carried both rostrally and caudally to just beyond the tumor poles. Polar cysts, if present, are entered at this point. Sixoproline peel sutures are placed and clipped laterally to the dura to provide gentle retraction on the spinal cord to aid in the dissection. The tumor spinal cord interface is carefully developed with a traction and counter-traction dissection technique. Feeding vessels and fibrous attachments are isolated, cauterized, and divided. Increased peel traction and internal decompression facilitate visualization and dissection of the lateral and ventral tumor margins. The ventral tumor margin is carefully developed with traction on the tumor and gentle countertraction on the spinal cord. Fibrous attachments and feeding vessels are systematically cauterized and divided. The clean resection cavity illustrates a grossly complete tumor resection.